Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now December 10th of 2020 and ever since the very end of the Skywalker saga, a lot of fans around the world have been very intrigued about the future of the Star Wars franchise by Disney, Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, Bob Chapek, you name it and exactly what this new expanded universe is going to look like into, of course, you know, comparison of the Kathleen Kennedy timeline. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the thing about Disney Star Wars is that, yes, we do know that they are now currently getting out of that phase of damage control and really are on the road to success here. We all witnessed what happened with The Mandalorian Season 2, especially with the latest episode that was directed by Robert Rodriguez, which, by the way, I do suggest that you guys go ahead and check out more of Robert's work. Uh, two films that I do suggest, uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico and Desperado. Go ahead and check them out. But The Mandalorian overall has really steered things in the right direction for Star Wars. It's kind of crazy to think how just a handful of episodes, I would say mostly Chapter 13 until where we are right now, is what really has brought back a lot of fans because now they see what Disney is capable of doing, what Jon Favreau is capable of doing, and exactly what's set up for the future of Star Wars. Now, with that being said, of course, what's really exciting all has to do with the character of Rey and the many changes that are indeed coming our way as well for future projects that will involve other characters out there that we are already familiar with. So with that being said, of course, with the Skywalker saga now over, both Disney and Lucasfilm are focused on their new Star Wars universe and more. It's explained, however, that creators like Jon Favreau are hard at work on developing major retcons to the sequel trilogy and more. However, it's explained that just recently Favreau and Lucas just established a major retcon for Rey Skywalker that will be completely unveiled sometime in mid-2021, which is set to actually involve Rey as a mother with her two children dubbed both Cade and Kira Skywalker which Rey will be a legitimate Skywalker this time in a new Rise of Skywalker sequel series for Disney+. Plus. Now, this untitled new series for Disney+, Plus is aimed to be released sometime in 2023. On top of that, it's described that the sequel series is set to go throughout the ages to explore Rey and her son and daughter, as well as some of the fan-favorite Jedi in the forms of Force Ghosts, where Rey in this series is best described as a master of her new Jedi Temple and Academy that takes place on the world of Tatooine just near the Lars homestead, where a Skywalker memorial is being planned for the show that will showcase both Leia, Luke, Ben, and Anakin Skywalker statues to support the Skywalkers that helped destroy the Sith once and for all. Now, not just that. The new series is best described to have lifelike animation in the mix that will be similar to the cutscenes from the old Republic era of Star Wars video games. Now, the sequel series is set to also feature the return of Palpatine's spirit in the mix, as well in the body of the Dark Acolyte. Now, let me stop right here for a second. Now, you guys may or may not recall, this was an original idea for Episode 9. This was an original concept by J.J. Abrams and George to actually have the Dark Acolyte be the main villain, portrayed by Matt Smith. Essentially, Matt Smith, uh, who is known for his roles in Doctor Who, or lesser known in Terminator Genesis as Skynet, uh, but, you know, Matt Smith was indeed attached to this movie. He shot some scenes. He was going to portray pretty much a host body for Palpatine's spirit to actually take over and use that body as a vessel to take on a younger form. And that was actually, I think, in my opinion, a little bit more original. I understand that Disney wanted to use the traditional looking Palpatine to attract more fans into the theaters. I get that. But let's not forget that they didn't really use Palpatine in their marketing anyway to begin with. He was pretty much a mystery. So they really could have gone through any route that they wanted to go to get people into the theaters. To tell you guys the truth, I mean, I think I honestly would have rather seen Matt Smith portraying a dark acolyte with Palpatine's spirit taking over his body. So the fact that they will be using that concept in the Rise of Skywalker sequel series that will be animated, by the way, on Disney+. Plus. However, the animation is going to be lifelike. It's, it's not going to be like Star Wars Rebels or the Clone Wars, which 
is more of a cartoony type of animation style. It's going to be more geared towards like what you would expect in a lot of video game cutscenes out there. That type of animation. And that to me I think is a very interesting route to take. I think that could make fans connect to them more that are really strictly only into the live action stuff. I think it's a great way to do it. So we do know that Daisy Ridley has no interest in returning for this role as Rey and that John Boyega and Oscar Isaac have no plans to come back at all as well. So far the only ones attached to this major project are Adam Driver, Mark Hamill, Hayden Christensen, and of course Matt Smith who is set to do the voiceover work of the Dark Acolyte. So we have some familiar people coming back that will do voiceover work and facial scans for these characters. So like I've said before in the past guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know about all this in the comments and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.